Hi everyone, Kelt here. Lady C's Book Review, Part 1, Chapters 1, 2 and 3. Meghan and Harry, The Real Story by Lady Colin Campbell. So, starting with the cover. The cover has a familiar picture of Harry and Meghan in black and white, and I think by now most of you have seen it anyway, and many of you have bought the book. And while Harry is in front, he is out of focus, and Meghan is in in focus and looking right at the camera. She's also not airbrushed in this picture, as she is in so many others, and I think in general the, the picture was a good choice and carefully chosen for the book cover, I think. Regarding Lady Colin Campbell, she is very clever. She chooses her words very carefully and, for those who spot it, gives a much better idea of what she's really trying to say. She is singing Meghan's praises as she could see what Meghan could have achieved if she played it right. And I think that many of us felt the same way at the start. But she is also obviously being very careful to avoid being sued which is why she comes across as singing Meghan's praises rather a lot at the start of the book. She does praise Meghan. She points out all the positives. In fact, the whole first chapter is gushing over Meghan and saying the things which Meghan would think and say of herself. It's almost like she's stroking Meghan's ego and maybe knowing that Meghan would be possibly reading the book, lulling Meghan and her fans into a full sense of appreciation. If you really look for it, it could almost be sarcastic or extremely dry. And then she throws in a truth like a hand grenade, which could negate all the praise, but somehow it doesn't. The Meghan supporters, or Meghan herself, would be reading it, expecting criticism, and instead she showers praise on Meghan and heaps all the blame on Harry. Speed read and you could miss it. I think I can see what she's doing, carefully choosing her words and getting her point across in a very subtle and clever way. For example, she was spouting positives about Meghan's independence and working alone, one wonderful thing after another. Then she says, like a lone wolf, describing Meghan. And then she follows it with something quite chilling. More on that a little later in this video. Yes, most of the info is what we already know but it will mean that the public will know that many bloggers and YouTubers were perhaps right all along. And there are some snippets that I didn't know, so it's well worth reading in my opinion. Chapter 1 begins by talking about all the activities around the wedding. Nothing there which most of us didn't know already. Lady C talks about Meghan not curtsying to Her Majesty the Queen. I remember that it had been said that Meghan did a brief curtsy which was missed by the camera. Somehow I think that that was a cover for her mistake. Lady C had friends at the wedding who said that many noticed the lack of a curtsy. Lady C also says that Meghan might have easily forgotten to curtsy due to nerves. My opinion is that she was not suffering from nerves, was cool as a cucumber and was feeling like being the most important person there, so her mind was probably on those curtsying to her rather than the other way around. Lady C is very generous towards Meghan in this first chapter and I believe that it is for two reasons. One, she doesn't want to be sued and two, she really believed that Meghan could have gone far within the royal family if only she stuck to the rules for which she blames Harry. She describes Meghan very positively regarding her wedding dress and veil and the flowers adorning the door of the chapel. However, she says that the wedding had been fraught with scenes of tantrums and demands, most of which were carefully concealed from the public. But she also says that by the time of the wedding, these things were well known within court circles. She refers to Meghan as being wonderfully self-possessed and having supreme self-belief. I love the way Lady C describes Meghan because she does it in a totally disarming way, and then she moves in with a subtle backhander. She criticises Harry quite a bit. She says that he should have nipped things in the bud. She refers to the tiara, and that it was Eugenie's one, which Meghan originally wanted. But as promised to Eugenie already, she realised that she couldn't have that one, So, obviously knowing about the romantic story behind the Russian tiara, she wanted that one, though was refused as no one but Her Majesty wears it. Lady C writes about Meghan's relationship with the palace courtiers and how they were shocked at her disrespect and arrogance. She writes about the benefits of Meghan marrying into the royal family and how they wanted someone of colour to marry Harry and how beneficial it would be for the monarchy and especially the Commonwealth. 
The most important part of the first few pages of the book that I've noticed is that Lady C says that although there is a very small amount of racism in the UK, which by being played upon would confuse the American press into thinking that Meghan was a victim of racism, when nothing could have been further from the truth, she said. I agree totally with this. There is very little racism in the UK and I experienced none while living and working in London. Another thing which stands out in this first chapter is the fact that Lady C is totally putting the responsibility on Harry, saying that he should have shown Meghan the right way to do things and guided her and instead he just let her have her own way and he also didn't put her right and make it easier for her. I personally think Harry might have tried but only once, as Meghan was intent on having her own way. And as we know, Harry was intent on giving her everything she wanted. Lady C is putting all the blame on Harry in these first few pages of the book. It's much about Meghan fitting in with the royal family, getting the protocol wrong, and Harry being to blame. This was an eye-opener for me, that Lady Colin blames Harry so much for Meghan's start of the marriage within the royal family. She also admits that it makes for a much more interesting narrative than if Meghan had got it right at the start and didn't have the problems. She emphasises what Harry and Meghan could have done with what they had, the good things about Meghan's character and how much they could have achieved, so she has totally put the onus on him. The Little Red Schoolhouse, which Meghan attended for nine years, is particularly interesting, as it was such an important part of shaping Meghan's early years. The old Chinese saying, give me a child until he is seven and I will give you the man, comes to mind. The school was a progressive but structured regimen based upon the four stages of cognitive development formulated by the Swiss psychologist Jean Piaget. The following is not in Lady C's book, but I researched a little into the teaching Megan received in her early years. I will put a link in the description for those who are interested in this. Jean Piaget a Swiss developmental psychologist who studied children in the early 20th century. His theory of intellectual or cognitive development, published in 1936, is still used today in some branches of education and psychology. It focuses on children from birth through adolescence and characterises different stages of development, including language, morals, memory and reasoning. Piaget made several assumptions about children while developing this theory. 1. Children build their own knowledge based on their experiences. 2. Children learn things on their own without influence from adults or other or older children. And 3. Children are motivated to learn by nature. They don't need rewards as motivation. That's very interesting to me um, if you apply it to how Megan has grown into the person she is. Whether you think this is an effective teaching method or not, it helps shape the way Megan interacts with the world she's in, positively and maybe not so positively. This, along with her parents doting on her, particularly her father, who was said to worship her, Megan was like a little goddess to her parents. Her mother called her flower, and her father, when not working, spent every moment with her. Lady C said that Doria was very put out with the amount of time that Thomas spent with Meghan, so much so that she felt neglected. Also, that she was given everything she wanted by her father and her siblings were possibly jealous or just indifferent. The following points the school taught are very interesting when you think of how Meghan has reacted in different situations during her marriage to Harry, the enterprises they formed and the problems which came with it. Point one. Assimilation is using an existing schema and applying it to a new situation or object. 2. Accommodation is changing approaches when an existing schema doesn't work in a particular ex situation. The third point, equilibration is the driving force that moves all development forward. Piaget didn't believe that the development progressed steadily Instead, it moved in leaps and bounds, according to experiences. Again, the link is in the description. Back to the book. Lady C refers to Megan's problem with her biracial identity and her experiences in school, where she would take on activities du during lunch break so that she wouldn't have to eat alone. Lady C describes Megan's grit, endurance and determination 
and her discipline, and all these positive attributes which combine to make her a strong person. And she says, and I quote, Circumstances forced her into being something of a lone wolf. And then Lady C expands on that by saying, And lone wolves make the best hunters. Lady C uses a lot of positive adjectives to describe Megan's character, then uses a couple of words which could change the whole paragraph into something quite negative or even sinister. She has an amazing gift with words and delivers many backhanded compliments throughout this book. Lady C also puts Megan's age at 39 or 40, which is older than Megan claims, but not quite as old as some people think she is. She speaks so very positively about Megan in the first couple of chapters, so much so that I was really wondering if I could actually get through the book without a blood sugar high. But then when she really lays into her much more so than Harry, it's not just the age thing, as Lady C didn't really criticise that, she just pointed it out. And then Lady Colin refers to the famous famous washing up liquid story, which has become Megan's go-to testimony, where Megan wrote a letter to the company to insist they change one word in the advert as it was detrimental to women. She says that that was Megan's downfall, which made palace courtiers look at her in a totally different way and was cringeworthy. In other words, she lost respect from people when she came out with this dishwashing liquid story in her speech. Lady C says that no child of 11 could have made that company change their advert in a month, which is what Megan was claiming. That it was her letter which did it, and the company changed their advert due to what she had said. She wrote that Megan's letter must have been one of many to do with this, and advertising companies would not be able to change an advert in a month. It takes longer than that, she wrote, and they must have had it in the works anyway. Megan's school was quite insular in that they encouraged friendships within the school and discouraged any fraternising with students outside of the school. They were sort of considering themselves quite elite. And then Lady Colin refers to the cosmetic surgery that Megan had done on her nose to refine the tip. She also refers to Megan's propensity to exaggeration, where her friends said that she embellished things to get her point across. And Lady Colin draws attention to incidences where Meghan exaggerated and how Meghan always felt she was destined to be someone, that she had every right to win at everything and that she was going to make it big and she was practising in the meantime. So when she won the homecoming queen, Lady C said that friends said that Meghan felt it was only right that she won, that she was going to get to the top and this was only her due. Regarding their childhoods, it seems that Harry's school made allowances for him with regard to helping him pass exams, but they also made allowances for his behaviour due to him losing his mother. They cut him a lot of slack and he was said to be quite obnoxious and not that popular. She also reminds us of his smoking, drinking and drug taking. Harry had found stability upon entering the army after leaving school, gaining his confidence and finding out who he was through all that, but Meghan wasn't. Meghan's transition into adulthood was one of struggle and strife, Lady C mentions Meghan graduating and her master's degree, although there is much info on the internet questioning her graduation and qualifications. Lady Colin writes about Meghan's relationship with Trevor Engelson and her calligraphy. One sentence here by Lady C, and I quote, Meghan was well on the way to developing a classy persona. Classy was a word that Meghan used a lot to describe herself, and it was what she aspired to be, and what she thought she was. Lady C goes on to say, some people found her demeanour sophisticated, while others regarded her demeanour as pretentious and full of crap. In an early indication of when Meghan would divide, and has continued to divide, opinion, the book refers to the distressing time when Meghan wouldn't get a role, when she was refused roles or not acknowledged in the way that she yearned to be. This was the time Megan was doing her blog called The Working Actress, and Lady C says that under this self pity and pain was fury. This was something she could see coming out in Megan's writing, and I quote from the book Her hunger for success was never exceeded by the pain of rejection and the frustration of not being acknowledged in the way she yearned to be. But the blog showed that it was a close run thing. In it, she was open about her self pity and pain, and while she did not spell it out, Beneath that lay fury. 
End of Lady Collins quote. Another descriptive piece from Lady C, where she says, Although Meghan had always aimed at presenting herself as both cool and classy, she very nearly came a cropper when she had the bright idea of distributing ganja spliffs in specially made crocus bags inscribed with shh to all her guests. This was Meghan's wedding to Trevor in Jamaica. Meghan didn't tell the guests what was in the bags. They could have got into serious trouble and one person didn't realise what was in it until they went through customs, so it was a very stupid idea. The book talked about Meghan's relationship with the Mulroneys and others in Canada and how impressed Meghan was by mixing with people of that stature. And it was at this juncture that Meghan spotted that her politics could further her trajectory to even greater success. So she was thinking about politics then. Lady Colin references Meghan's diva attitude starting to surface. And I quote, She also gave the first hints of the schizophrenic attitude to recognition that she would later exhibit once she became truly famous. She talks about Meghan's treatment of a handyman who was fixing her dishwasher and how she bemoaned a driver who drove her from the airport. And Lady C says that that was when Meghan's schizophrenic attitude started to be seen. From all I've read, I think some would argue with that and say that they saw it in her as a child, but that was by looking at a few photos and a couple of videos. And going by what her family members allegedly said, when it was either her brother or sister who said that she should not be left alone with the young children. To those who've already read the book, what do you think about the first chapters I've mentioned here? To those who've not read it yet, or have no plans to, let me have your comments on what I've said so far. I also noticed that many are saying that the book was a disappointment, as it offers no new information and nothing we don't already know. I would say that we, and by we, I mean YouTube channel creators and viewers, know more than most, and there are many people who would read the book and discover a lot of information for the first time, so for that reason it was worth writing. As for where Lady Colin obtained her information, does it matter if some was from what was already on the internet and YouTube? The book needed to be written and she was the one to do it. So, thanks for watching and let me have your comments and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Ding my bell for more alerts so that you'll get part two. And I think there'll be about four parts of this. Like if you liked it and share. Bye.